Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, today, we are excited to have Dr. Liza Hezendi. Uh, she's a postdoctoral research uh, at State Key Laboratory for Space Weather and the National Institute for Space Research in Brazil. Um, uh, she she's speaking uh, to us about a typical sporadic e layer development over the Brazilian sector. Uh, Liza has a PhD in space geophysics from the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research. She has been developing projects in the area of space and atmospheric science, and she's experienced uh, in acting on sub subjects related to ionosphere as uh, e layers, irregularities layers. Ionospheric parameters in equatorial regions and low latitudes. So, Liza, you have like about 40 minutes. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to present my work here. Uh, my name is Eliza Rezende, as Marquez said, and my work group are composed by these people here. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, some work, some work is, uh, concerning today's sporadic layer, uh, mainly in Brazilian sector, because you have a lot of peculiarities in our sector. So uh, this study is very interesting. Uh, in ionosphere. So my work in entirety of the study uh, of the atypical sporadic layer development of the Brazilian sector. And the, I presented here a brief summary when I will talk about the sporadic layer and the main mechanisms of the S layer formation, my motivation uh, of this study, and the, I will present some data analysis, some results and some discussions, and finally my conclusions. Uh, it's for, when we talked about the Brazilian peculiarities, everyone studied the plasma bubbles. But my, I emphasize it here in the re regions because here you have a denser layer named the sporadic layer. And although the name is sporadic, these layers occur all the time during the nighttime and the daytime in the ionosphere. Uh, this, um, this is particularly characterized by the daily variability and the different characteristics relative to altitude and the latitudes. And the primary ions in these layers are metallic ions like iron, magnesium, sodium, and calcium, because these ions uh, has a long lifetime. And these sporadic layers are classified in several types according to the different mechanisms of formation and the location of observation. So uh, around the world, we have three like uh, three different types of sporadic layer. In high latitudes, you have the particle precipitation forming the auroral type of the sporadic layer. In equatorial latitudes, you have instabilities of the plasma due to the electrojet current in forming the SQ layer. And in warm and middle latitudes, you have the wind shear mechanism that is the main mechanism of the S layer formation. But especially in Brazil, you have the electric field acted in the S layer development also. So this, this is very interesting because in Brazil, it's possible to observe these three different types. You have the uh, anomaly here. Uh, named the South uh, Anomaly Magnetic, uh, South American Magnetic Anomaly, or SAMA, uh, that character, character, uh, characterized by the low magnitude of the magnetic field. For this, it's possible to have the particle precipitation here. And we have the uh, magnetic equator inside of Brazil. For this, you have the presence of the electrojet current. And they also, you have, uh, we have the wind shear mechanism acting around the Brazilian sector. And during the space weather, we observed the disturbed electric field acted in the ES layer. And this, uh, this, uh, today, I presented the effect of the electric field. But before I show here my motivation, my motivation it's because of this I have the I, we have uh, some different things that happen only in Brazil. For example, uh, I show here the globe and the note that in the red line it represented the magnetic equator. But when uh, when in, inside of the Brazil uh, we have the high declination here. So uh, this. Because of this, you have a north a northwest movement, and it's very very quickly. And also, we have the 
the low values of the magnetic field here. And these, these expanded also. I show animation here and notice the data here, the year here, and notice that it happened. We have the, a clear movement of the magnetic equator and expansion of this anomaly. For this, our ionosphere, uh, I show again. For this, our ionosphere is different than the other ionospheres around the globe. And we have the, a lot of different things in the F region, but in specifically in sporadic layer, the, the, devel the development uh, is very different than other regions of, around the globe. So I show here ionogram. I will talk a little more after in the next slide, but no, uh, I only show that a different, a typical sporadic layer that I observe in my data. Uh, in, in this high here, we have the F region, and this is probably refers to the plasma bubbles, but in around the 100 kilometers here, we have the strong sporadic layer. And this is very typical. We don't observe uh, these types of sporadic layer in the other globe sector. So, sorry. so uh, this is my motivation. I show, I, I, uh, we observe the data here every week because you have a, we we uh, we analyze the space weather effects and the, I observe that during the, magne the magnetic storms, I observe in some regions of Brazil, for example, Boa Vista, that is located in very near of the magnetic equator and very near of the geographic equator. We observe this atypical sporadic layer. So I try to explain these mechanisms because I know that the wind is not capable to form uh, these sporadic layers. And the, for this, I, sh I performed a study about this, the ES layer development. And my focus is to analyze the electric field effect. And the, I chose three regions, two different regions, Boa Vista, located very near of, as I said before, very near of the geographic equator and magnetic equator. And in San Luis, that's very near of the, it's not so near, but it's uh, the, the, the region near of the, magnetic crater that we have in Brazil. And in Cachoeira Paulista, it's a low latitude re region located very far off the magnetic and the geographic equator. And I use the magnetometer data, TIC, and the model named MIDI. And my main equipment is the DigiSonde. DigiSonde is a radar. Uh, operated in the high frequency in the, in the ionosphere, and it's very possible to uh, study the um, web region. Uh, I'm sorry, da -da -da. I don't know that happened. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and the I okay, I kill. <laughs> And uh, sorry, and the, this equipment it's very and the, uh, the equipment the equipment it's very interesting to analyze the, the ionosphere because uh, when we uh, when we uh, we use the equipment it's possible to analyze the F region and the sporadic layer and the debris region and the also uh, it's possible to obtain the parameters of mainly the frequency parameters when we relate the two electron density so it's very very easy to analyze the uh, ionosphere with this equipment. And the, I show here example for, for you, and we have the F region here in the high altitudes, but here you have a strong sporadic layer. And this sporadic layer, uh, uh, it's a classical, typical sporadic layer with the wind shear mechanisms. And the, we observe these sporadic layers in, in low latitudes, mid latitudes, and the other regions around the globe. And the, when analyzing these sporadic layers, we, we use the FTES or FBES, the blank frequency of the S layer, or top frequency of the S layer that is related to the electron density or the virtual height of the ES layer, but we prefer to uh, use the frequency. 
And uh, this is a graph, sorry, I, I forget to talk about this graph. It's a graph that named the ionograms. There's a graph here, height versus frequency, when it's possible to analyze these parameters. So this equipment is the main equipment to analyze the ionosphere in our sector. Uh, but uh, before I talk to my results, I try to explain the dynamics of the product layer. In the real region, we consider only the production loss of the ionosphere, but for sporadic layer specifically, you need to analyze the transport term also. So we have the continuity equations, the basic equation for the ionosphere, when uh, depends on the production loss and the transport term. And the, the transport term that we use for specifically sporadic layer is, uh, is obtained of the movement equation that depends on the wind components and the electrode components. Uh, here, uh, for the um, middle latitudes, um, uh, mainly the German group, for example, that study a lot of sporadic layer, they only uh, worry about the winds components. So we have a lot of works about the uh, role of the diurnal, semi-diurnal, diurnal, and quarter diurnal winds. But for specific Specifically, case of Brazil, mainly during the magnetic storms, you have the electrode components important also in this equation. Mainly the zonal, uh, I try to put it here, mainly the zonal electrode. And for this, it, it's a little different to study the sporadic layers over our sector. Uh, but the main mechanism is wind shear that operates over the Brazil also. Uh, this mechanism explained using these figures here. Basically, we have the, ion, the ions following the wind movement and the, due to the magnetic field presence, presence, we have a Lorentz force that carry the ions uh, for the upward when winds in this direction and the, the that world when in winds in this direction. And in the new points of the winds, we have accumulation of this, this, these ions. And this mechanism is possible because they like the electrons following the vertical magnetic field line to maintain the plasma neutrality. So this is the main mechanism to form the sporadic layers. But our sector, as I mentioned before, we observe the atypical S layer, mainly in the Boa Vista. And for this, we try to analyze it. Uh, uh, firstly, I, I and my group performed the case study, but to know if this behavior is true, we prefer to analyze a set of the magnetic storms. So I choose 20 magnetic storms when I have the data of the Boa Vista, São Luis, and Cachoeira Paulista from 2015 to 2018. And the five stages of the data processing is uh, mentioned here. And the first line identify the atypical sporadic layer in ionograms over Boa Vista. Boa Vista is the main stage that I studied. And after I analyzed the ionogram data available for San Luis and Cachoeira Paulista for the same period, I only consider the, the study for the three regions. If I have the data for Boa Vista and San Luis and Cachoeira not, I, I don't consider in my studies. And I excluded in all the cases that the wind shear is the, when I only observe the wind shear in is product layer because I I don't mention here because of the time, but this product layer is classified in types uh, in letters, and these different letters refers to the uh, wind. It's the only mechanisms, or we have the particle precipitation, or you have the instability of the plasma. So I excluded the the, the cases that I know that the only the winds it's uh, performed some effect in the sporadic layers. And the, I identified the magnetic storms phase, which the strong sporadic layers occur for each region. And I obtained the frequency parameters to relate it to the electron dense of this sporadic layer. So I show the table here, the size is not good here, but the, uh, this is only to show to the, the 20 magnetic storms that I, I analyze. I choose a quiet day to use it as a reference. And the, I observe the atypical is for that layers here in the when I took I put the maximum frequency that I found 
And after I see that the data that is happening in the phase of the magnetic storms for each 20 magnetic storms that I analyze. I show here one case study, the this very famous magnetic storms that occurs. There are a lot of works about these magnetic storms, but the first work about, uh, about these magnetic storms concerning to the sporadic layer is, uh, is our group because in the community of the study that is sporadic layer, they mentioned that the magnetic storms don't, doesn't influence it, doesn't cause some influence in the ES layer behavior, but I know that in Brazil this happens. So I chose this, I chose this geomagnetic storms to show a clear case that it happens for these three regions. So I show in this in these graphs here is the BZ, the DST, and the AE for the March, March 2015. And it notes that during the main phase of these magnetic storms, the BZ uh, uh, maybe a, a long time for to soft world, and the AE has a high values here. And at the same time, some things occur in our ionosphere. For uh, to know if the disturbed electric field acted in a ionosphere, I used the virtual frequency, uh, virtual height of the F region, and this. Uh, I compare here in the red line the data and in the black line uh, refers to the quiet period. And in notes, in, in summary, note three different things that happen here. We have the, the high values of the, these parameters here that refers to the, uh, in these hours, refers to the undershielding electric fields. And the, after our, I have westward uh, elect, disturbed electric field, that means that the overshoot the acting in these hours. In the after, in the recovery phase of the magnetic storms, we have the disturbance in dynamo acting. All these, these things that happen, all these the disturbance electric field uh, occurs over the Brazilian sector, refers to the um, turbulence in our ionosphere. Uh, these things uh, happen around the globe. This magnetic storm is very intense in the Earth region, and it causes some influence in the ES layer also. Uh, uh, it's important to mention here that the undershield, the disturbed electric field is the same direction of the typical ionosphere, oh. but the overshielding or disturbed the dynamo, the disturbed electric field, it's the contrary, the typical behavior of the ionosphere. So I analyze the sporadic layer's behavior. Firstly, I show for you uh, the frequency parameters and the, the FB and the FT refers to electron density uh, for Boa Vista, San Luis and Cachoeira Paulista. And it, we observe it, uh, different things for each region. For Boa Vista and San Luis, we observe high values of the FTES. That means the strongest product layers occurrence in this time. But it, in Boa Vista, we observe it during the recovery phase. And in São Luís, we observe it during the main phase of the magnetic storms. And in Cachoeira Paulista, I observe nothing. We observe the typical values of these frequencies. We, we, when I look at the ionograms, it's very very typical behavior uh, of the ES layer over Cachoeira Paulista. But in Boa Vista, we observe the string sporadic layer that I, I showed before, the typical sporadic layers in these hours. In the San Luis, we have our surprise because we observe the SQ layer of the um, sporadic layer. The SQ layers refers the instabilities of the plasma due to the electrical jet current, but in 2015, uh, magnetic equators located a little far uh, over San Luis. So we don't expect the, this uh, SQ layer anymore over San Luis. In my typical data, I don't observe SQ layer anymore. So this is a new find about the equatorial regions over Brazil. Because of the declination, uh, we have a competition mechanisms of the sporadic layers. So it's the first time we observe the two two different mechanisms acting in the same region. We have the SQ layer due to the plasma instabilities, but in the same, at the same time, you have the wind shear. So this is very new 
uh, very new discover for us. Uh, and the first thing that I performed is a correlation between the sporadic layer and the disturbed electric field to to know a clear uh, a clear um, graphs for the for all the twenty magnetic storms. So this graph it's a little complicated, but I try to explain here. If you, uh, we don't understand, please in the questions we we I try to explain uh, a little more, but. Um, uh, it's uh, these graphs refer to the correlation between the difference between the frequency parameters of the S layer concerning a quiet day uh, using this equation here. So I obtain for each hour the uh, FTS disturb the, during the disturbed uh, dis period and the, in the quiet to analyze this difference of the ES layer behavior. And they also, I uh, obtain using the digits on the data, the electric field, because you don't have measurements of the electric field in, in, a, in, a, re, in a region. We use the, sorry, we use this, this relationship here. And this, uh, this velocity here, you obtain to use in the uh, true, high, true height of the rough region. So uh, with the digits on the data, it's possible to, to obtain the vertical drift. And the, it's, it's no, it's very known in the community of the ionosphere here that this, uh, this vertical drift is, uh, has a relationship with the electric field. So we used this because you don't have measurement. And we observed two, two different things. We separated it during the main phase of the magnetic storms and the recovery phase, the values. And in San Luis, I'm sorry, in San Luis, we have the high difference during the main phase of the magnetic storms. And in recovery phase, we have a, a high difference uh, during the uh, over Boa Vista. So th this result is very interesting for us. And the Cachoeira Paulista look is that you don't have um, nothing. We have, of course, we have here uh, some different sporadic layers, but uh, it's not in, in general, the behavior is almost the same in the typical sporadic layers, uh, the typical sporadic layers during the quiet time. So to analyze the effect of the disturbed electric field, I use a model. This model uh, was developed by Carrasco et al. in 2007. And during my PhD, I changed some parameters of this model. I tried to, I changed the, I included the wind shear, I included the electric field, and I included the metallic ions to analyze the sporadic layer. Because this model, uh, the first, the, the first model, the first version of this model uh, is to analyze the re region. So I, I included the sporadic layer in this model. And now this works in this way when we, uh, the end of parameters uh, refers to the molecular ions and I included the metallic ions also. And the after uh, it's possible to, to choose if he would like to only uh, include the winds, winds or the electric field components. And the, after this model calculated the, the, the ion density for the main ions of the re region and the metallic ions important to uh, yes, layer formation. And the sum of these ions refers to electron density. So this model works very well for our latitudes. And the, in the background, you have the re region and the distinct layers here that perform the dow a downward movement refers to the sporadic layers. This agree very well with the, the observational data. And the wind shear equation that I used is obtained metals and the back in 1979, when we use the, this wind shear equation that depends on the amplitude, the period, and the wavelength, and the phase. And for this study, I used the, the marginal and the zonal component component of this model here for each region, our analyzing. And I only included it to the diurnal and the semi-diurnal tides because it is, uh, tides, these components are most important to the other, uh, than the other uh, components. So uh, the, I, I, when I, I noticed here that the amplitudes of the Boa Vista 
it's it's uh, it's a lower when we compare with São Luís and Cachoeira Paulista. For this, it's not possible to have a strong squad player over Boa Vista. We observe the squad players with a low frequency during the quiet time. For this, this, this a typical squad player. It's very new for us. When I, I, I look at the, the first ionogram that I observe this specific squad player, I know that the other mechanisms uh, acted it together uh, besides the wings to yes layer developing. So I included the these wings in our model and we have these results here for Boa Vista, San Luis and Cachoeira Paulista. In these graphs it's um it's a density uh, it's a density in log scale uh, of the height versus universal time. In the background we have the re region and the distinct layers here refer to the uh, sporadic layers. In the other cases, they perform the downward movement because of the tidal winds. And the next step is to include the uh, electric field values. So I included the, uh, I started to the 0 0.25 millivolts per, per meter, meter and the until 3 millivolts per meter. And the, I show here three results, but the, my step is this here. And the note the, that it happens. Uh, it's important also to mention here that the winds, uh, I included the winds plus the electricity in the, our model. Uh, observe that uh, the, when I include high values of the electricity, the sporadic layers are stronger. And the, for Boa Vista and uh, in São, in, and in San Luis. But when I, I put some high values of the electric field, the model doesn't converge anymore for the two regions here. And in Cachoeira Paulista, you don't observe, uh, we observe, of course, a little a difference, but it's a little. It's not, it's not the same behavior of the, the Boa Vista and San Luis. So it's the first thing that the electric field doesn't act nothing in the Cachoeira Paulista, uh, in the yes layer formation. And when included in this table here, we observe that the, when uh, the percentage of the increase of the sporadic layer, it's very high for Boa Vista, very, very high for San Luis. It's unrealistic, uh, unrealistic uh, value here. But in Cachoeira Paulista, the difference is very little. So uh, in Boa Vista, I understood that the, the electric field is true. Okay, I, I observed this, this percentage of the observational data also. But in San Luis, it's very, it's very strange. I, I think it, it is this behavior, it's not possible uh, to observe in our data. And in Cachoeira Paulista, it's an uh, indication that the electric field doesn't act. The, and the, this behavior of the Cachoeira Paulista, the, the behavior of the yes layer uh, developed over Cachoeira Paulista, it's almost the same that the middle latitudes. So uh, the, we separated our discussion in three steps. For Boa Vista, uh, we observed that the that the during the recovery phase, uh, in, for all the cases for our twenty all the cases of our study, we observed that these are typical sporadic layers occur during the recovery phase, and during the recovery phase we have the disturbance dynamo. And to prove that I have the disturbance dynamo, I use the TIC maps. And I show here the TIC maps over the Brazilian sector. You have another anomaly in our sector uh, that he, instead of we have the high, uh, high electron density around the, the magnetic equator, we have the two peaks um, of the higher electron density in the south of Brazil and in the north of Brazil. And these, these two peaks, here, this is in the two peaks here, uh, it's because of the Appleton's anomaly or uh, point effect. And the, when we have the disturbance dynamo, this the, occurs a disruption of the, 
the density, the electron density. So we expected that we observe the weak electron density in this in the south of Brazil because the electric field, the subelectric field, acted in the contrary of the typical uh, ionosphere. So I show here the TIC for the main phase of the magnetic storms, and the, we look at that the, there's an intensification the TIC, but it, during the recovery phase, we really observe that this is uh, very weak in concern to the quiet period. So it's the indication that the disturbance dynamo occurs uh, in, uh, in the recovery phase for our 20 magnetic storms. And I calculated the difference of the TIC in the, the, during the quiet time and disturbance this, this period and the recovery phase. And the, I observed that the, the difference for uh, agree very well with the, the, um, the Boa Vista. And in the other cases, you don't observe this. The other regions, you don't did observe this. So uh, for Boa Vista, we concluded that the zone westward of the disturbance dynamo acted to uh, cause a uh, straining of the S layer uh, during the recovery phase of the magnetic storms. But in San Luis, um, in San Luis, we observed that the um, different sporadic layers that I mentioned before, because when I when I see when I have this movement of the uh, the magnetic equator, you don't expect that San Luis behavior uh, is uh, equatorial region because uh, San Luis is located now very far off the magnetic. It's not very far, but it's far off the the magnetic equator. So uh, we observe the SQ layer uh, during the typical uh, typical days in Belém, the other station located near of the magnetic equator. Uh, and but during this these uh, magnetic storms that I analyzed, we observe the SQ layer here. And the, for us, it's very very different to do this because this I I performed another work. And uh, use the Aragua team data, it's very uh, stationary of San Luis to prove that I observed the SQ layer. And the, the results confirms that they occurs a uh, electrojet uh, current expansion. Because when we have the magnetic storms, this uh, electrojet reached the, the, the uh, higher values of the of the Brazilian sector. So we observed the gradient drifting stability in San Luis that we don't expect, expect anymore. And when I look at the magnetometer data to, to, to see the current of the electrojet, notice that this day here, the, the values is 20, it's the maximum it's 20 nanoteslas. And here during the main phase of the magnetic storms, you have the strong uh, electrojet current here. So prove that during the main phase of the magnetic storms, we observe the competition mechanisms in San Luis uh, that we don't expect anymore. This occurs during, this is very interesting. This occurs for the all 20 magnetic storms also. And finally, I presented it here in Cachoeira Paulista. Uh, we analyzed uh, with our model and our data that this region was not influenced by electric field during, uh, at any phase of the magnetic storms. But sometimes we observe the other, uh, other mechanisms that influence Cachoeira Paulista. Uh, the particle precipitation occurs because the Cachoeira Paulista is located in the border of the summer. I show here uh, in the white circles the, the, the anomaly, the summer region that characterized by the low values of the magnetic field. And the Cachoeira Paulista is located in, here. So during the disturbance times, we observed that the particle precipitation, the auroral type of the Cachoeira Paulista. But now we observed that the spread sporadic layers during the the quiet period, during the quiet period also, and the, I it's my I don't uh, show the tails here because I try to work in, in this now, and uh, that uh, uh, that the, the 
Cachoeira Paulista, the behavior of the Cachoeira Paulista, it's much more um, assemblies than, than low, than middle latitudes, that's Boulder or Leomont or other regions. Because in, uh, in sometimes, during, mainly during the quiet times, we observe these types of sporadic layers. And the, the literature over the Brazil don't mention these sporadic layers here during the quiet times. And the, in the literature, the, in the middle latitude, they refer to the Kelvin Helmont instability. So I think that these sporadic layers that we classify um, uh, as aurora type, but of course during the quiet times, it's not possible to have the particle precipitation during the quiet time, uh, refers to the another instability. And the, I try to, to study and include this stability in this model, in the MIRI model, to analyze this effect is the future. But I think that Cachoeira Paulista, we have the instability that actually in the ES layer developed. So uh, my conclusion is this. Uh, we have the atypical sporadic layers occurring in Boa Vista that we don't expect. It. And this occurs due, during the recovery phase of the magnetic storms due to the disturbance uh, dynamo electric field. I have the electrojet expansion uh, and these SQ layers. Uh, it's possible to observe it in regions that uh, during the quiet time I don't observe it anymore. And the winds acted as the main mechanisms to form the Cachoeira Paulista. And the, I show here that these uh, twisted days for players over the Brazil, there are a lot of questions yet, open questions yet about the ES layer development. And the, I try to, to answer some of these questions. And I, this is my conclusions in the red and, and the that I, I talked here. And the, uh, in, the recent, in the recent year, uh, years, uh, I and my group published in JGR three articles about this, uh, yes, layer behavior. And the, this recent article refers, explain that this expansion uh, of the electrojet current. And in the last years, we tried to analyze the other effects of the sporadic layers and compare with the other, other regions around the globe, but we have tried to, to discover some new things about the ES layer development. So thank you very much. And I would like to thank you, the Marquez, thank you, the, the opportunity, and this, this agency here of the Brazil. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. <laughs> we have some questions? I am definitely not an expert uh, in this field. <laughs> Just a <laughs> question about in a slide 21, you showed some results that uh, you mentioned one of them is not following the other. So, this yes, so, so yeah, so you showed that, uh, uh, I think the Sao Luis data, mm -hmm. yes, the, the two from the bottom, you said that doesn't match the other one. So uh, I am not sure if I understood it correctly or not, but I think you explained it based on the how the equatorial line moves mm -hmm. or... There is another explanation for that. Yeah, yes, it's true. Uh, we have the we have the this difference. Oh, sorry, sorry. this difference occurs during the for Boa Vista. It's not the it's not refers to the electrojet expansion. It refers only the disturbance dynamo because occurs during the recovery phase of the magnetic storms. But in San Luis, we have a a high value this difference. And of course, the model, the, the, the Israel, I forget to mention that the model doesn't consider the electrojet current. For this, I think that the unrealistic results here. But the, our observational data, we observed that the electrojet expansion. And the, it's the first time that we observe, and I published in JGR about this. And the, after in a conference that I, I in the COSPAR in the next in the last year, they mentioned that it, that it is possible 
because during the main phase of the magnetic storms, we have a strong, a strong electric field acting in the ionosphere. So for this, the, because the, our higher declination, we have this expansion. For these in regions that I don't expect the, the, the stabilities of the electrojet currents, I observe this this uh, instability using the sporadic layer, the CQ sporadic layer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Testing results. Yeah. And uh, you want to ask? If you want to ask. About the, the world type. Can, uh, yeah, the mic, <laughs> about ah. the, uh, the world type of uh, sporadic layers. Uh, the the, world, the name of a world type is because it's the same uh, process happening on the on the, it, the South Atlantic anomaly, like particle precipitation only, uh, because at the end you you talk about that there are Kelvin Helmholtz acting together, but it's still uh, uh, those are still a world type or kind of. Yeah, it's a it's a different because these aurora types occur mainly in Santa Maria. It's the uh, city of Marquesi born, I think, or or study. Yeah, uh, and Santa Maria is the south of Brazil, and there uh, there are um, there is a low values of the magnetic field there, and for this the particle enters in our ionosphere, and it's possible to have the particle precipitation. So during the disturbed times, we have. Uh, particle precipitated processes in aurora regions and the, in summer regions. Uh, and the, we observe in aurora regions these sporadic layers. And in Santa Maria, the, located in the center of the, the anomaly, we observe the same sporadic layer. But the process is a little different. Um, uh, we have the chorus waves forming the sporadic layers in aurora regions, but in our regions is, is due to the Riz waves. And the uh, in the inner radiation belt. So for this, we it's possible to have here the sporadic layers in our in summer regions. But during the quiet time, I observe in Santa Maria and the Cachoeira Paulista almost the same trace of the sporadic layers. And the, I know that it's not possible to have the particle precipitation during the quiet time over Brazil. So I try to found in the literature another 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 mechanism that that explain these these atypical flood clears occurring in these regions during the quiet time, and the, I found in the literature that the Kelvin Helmholtz instability is the I try it's the, the last the last work that I I send the a journal of Frontier. Marquesi is my co-author, and the, we observed that the, the, the wind is turbulent during the quiet time. It's possible that the wind, the, the wind uh, uh, has a turbulence. And the, it's the very same that the troposphere region. We have the ionosphere and the same behavior that occurs in troposphere here. So it's very interesting because it, the, the, there are another mechanisms that the, we found it to explain the atypical sporadic layers over our data. Thank you. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. You, have the, you have the different mechanisms that generates like similar. Uh, yes, the thing, similar the, trace. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Thank you. Thank Elizabeth. you. Thank you. <laughs>